This video is a continuation of the Modeling 101 series. And actually, we're not going to introduce any new tools over what I've shown in previous videos, um, but we are going to make a more complex object. So this is just going to take more iterations of some of the same tools that have already been shown. So this is what we're going to make in this video. Uh, the first step is to load up the sample object start scene. That way you have the shaders uh, available. Those are available to download. And uh, basically what I want to do is analyze this to figure out what's the right shape to start from. So this um, is hard to identify. You could start from a cylinder, but then you have this part in here that gets really squared off in here. And so this is a contiguous piece. And so I can't have that be two separate pieces and, and um, uh, or else I would have a, a much sharper transition here. So I think this is easy to identify. This is just a cylinder. All right, so we'll just use a cylinder and we'll do some scaling on that. Uh, this one over here is a little tougher to identify. Um, I think the easiest way to do this is gonna, gonna be to create a cube. You can see here, this is basically a cube. And this whole thing would be a cube out to here. Just these segments have been beveled off. So that's what we're gonna do uh, making this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and come over to Maya, double click on the cube. I'm going to go ahead and set um, my depth up to 3. And I'm going to set my depth divisions to 3 as well. All right? Click Create. Now I'm just going to click F uh, to zoom in here. So here you can see now what we have. And again, basically all I've done is I've created three section cube. The center one is going to be unchanged. These outer ones here are going to be beveled along those edge. And you're automatically going to get this transition. Well, which is really nice. All right, so to do that, I'm going to right click, choose edge, I'm going to drag a marquee across this. So I can do both of these. Um, I can just go back and forth and select both sides of this, but I, I can also use the symmetry tools. So to use symmetry, I'll just deselect so you can see this working. I'm going to go to the modeling toolkit, and then I want to use symmetry on whatever axis I have symmetry around. So in this case, it's the Z axis that I have symmetry around. So if you uh, created your uh, cube on a different axis, then you're going to have to look down here and make sure you select the right uh, axis for symmetry. So in this case, I can use Object Z or World Z. Uh, either one's going to work um, because they're both aligned. So now if I select these edges, these back ones automatically get selected. So it just simplifies the selection process more or less. OK, now I'll just add a bevel on that. Now you can see that we're already getting the shape that we're looking for just with that one bevel operation. It already has basically the right shape here. So I take a look at it and try to see if there's any adjustments. This edge right here is a little bit longer than this edge. So I'd say I'm going to drive that fraction up. So um, when you're using these um, widget uh, widgets, you can use uh, control and it's a left click and drag. I know it's a right, I'm mean, sorry, it's a middle click and drag if you select your, uh, your channel over here. But with these widgets, you left click and drag. And again, you can add control onto it. I'm just going to drive that up a small amount just to basically make those all relatively even. So that looks pretty good to me. All right, so that gets the, the base shape here. And now we need to figure out how to refine this, how to make this shape look better. So uh, the, one of the most obvious things here is this end is, uh, is rounded down. There's a pretty heavy bevel across here. So let's go ahead and do that. So when I try to double click this, you'll notice that that doesn't select. The reason for that is this face right here is an n-gon. An n-gon is any face that has more than uh, four vertices. And, um, and basically, the, a lot of tools, including the selection tools, work across quads. So this is actually working across a triangle as well. That doesn't always work either, but um, in this case, it works fine. So, but the, the loop selection tools by double clicking, uh, that, um, that is something that works across quads. What we want to do here is just grab the face, and then we'll just bevel the face. Because when you bevel a face, it essentially just bevels the perimeter of the, um, of the face. So th that's going to automatically switch my, um, my selection to those edges. And you can see, because I have symmetry on, I get that automatically in the back. And then I'm going to go ahead and click Bevel. And that gives me pretty close to what I want. I'd say it's a little deeper uh, than what it looks like it should be here. So I'll go ahead and back that bevel off. If that ever happens to you, you saw my widget, my widget disappeared. If that ever happens, uh, basically you just have to come back and reselect over here in the channel box. So just select the, the word bevel. 
and I, I still don't see my widget, right? So here's all here are all my channels um, that I can adjust, but I don't see the widget. If you want that widget back, just tap T. So T is, is show manipulators in Maya. And then I can just drag this uh, fraction down. So I'm going to, again, control, click and drag to reduce that down to whatever I think it needs to be. So technically, this is round in the picture. I'm not going to sweat that in this particular case. I just want to, we'll get the, the basic shape set up. This would be a, a different operation. I don't want to get into that yet. All right, so um, that gives me a good setup. Everything's looking pretty good. And we're kind of where we were on the bolt shape, where everything's just a little too sharp and a little too um, CG-like. And so now what I want to do is go ahead and start making some changes on this that, that make things look a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, go back to Edges. I'm going to double click on this to select that edge loop. And then instead of this being so squared off and triangular, it's still going to be triangular, but it's got a nice sweep to it. I'm just going to bevel it. All right, so I'm going to go back to the modeling toolkit, click bevel. It's already starting to be the right thing. And all I have to do is really add some segments into this and that'll smooth it right out. So I'll go something like that and I'll actually increase that fraction just a little bit. Something like that looks pretty good to me. So that now we have this nice smooth, curve that looks very much like what the reference image looks like. Um, and everything is still a little on the overly sharp side. So let's go ahead and just bevel these things down. Now I don't want to bevel everything. For instance, I don't want these edges being beveled because that would start to create faceting along here. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. If all of these were beveled again with a small offset, which they'll get automatically, See how that sort of segments out? It looks like it facets down. Uh, those two edges close together are creating that look. So I'm just going to press undo to get rid of that. And I just want to basically um, bevel these edges that are hardened that I don't want to be hardened. So um, in this case, it might be, we'll just sort of double click these things and we'll, we'll make it happen. All right, so a little bit of uh, spinning around, but this will be fine. All right, so something like that uh, basically looks good. We also want these across the middle, so I'll go ahead and select those. And I'm using the Shift modifier. I apologize for not saying that. Um, so if you add Shift, that's a toggle. And you can see it changes from plus to minus depending on the selection. If you add Control and Shift, it's always Add to Selection. So Control Shift adds to Selection. So I apologize for not saying that um, sooner. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and, and, and do the end caps as well. That should look a little better, something like that. And I'm going to go ahead and run a bevel on that, and we'll see what we get. So uh, that is actually a pretty decent size radius. And so what I want to do is just increase the segments on it. Maybe something like that is fine, maybe, uh, maybe three. All right, so I'll take a look, and we'll see what we get there. Pretty close to what I would want, I think. Um, this here, uh, this needs some additional beveling, so I'm going to go ahead and grab that face and then just smooth that out a little, little bit with another, maybe a couple segments. So that'll soften that up uh, towards the end as well. And again, I know that's not exactly like the picture, but that's going to be good enough for, for this, uh, this, uh, this tutorial. All right, so that basically does it. So what we have here are a series of bevels, and you can look back and see the series of bevels that stack in here to create that shape. But we started from the right primitive, we just added some bevels, and then we got the basic shape. I'm going to go ahead and assign some materials to it. So I'm going to right click, assign an existing material. I'm going to assign the black material to the whole thing. You can see that looks pretty all right. Not fantastic, but all right. And I'm going to select this face. I'm going to use shift period, and that grows the selection. And that's an easy way to um, change your selection. Um, and then I'm just going to take a look at how far back that needs to go. Something like that. Maybe you could go a little further. Um, I'm going to right click. Oh, let me move this up so you can actually see the whole menu. Assign an existing material. And this time, it's either the shiny one or the dull silver. It doesn't really matter. All right. Um, something like that. All right. So now we have that looking more like it should. And again, this is if you don't have these shaders, it's not really a big deal. You can assign a black and a silver, whatever. OK, and then to add the handle onto this, again, we're, we're just going to use a cylinder. So I'm just going to double click that. I'm going to reset the settings. 
Uh, it's probably fine. 20 is probably enough resolution. And then I know I want it to be tall, so I might as well go ahead and make that something like an 8. And then I'll scale this down. So I just press the R key or select your, um, your scale tool and find the right scale on this. Looks like 8 was not quite enough, so I'll just stretch that out on Y. Okay, so maybe it's something like that. And again, just take a take a look back at your at your reference to get a sense of the overall scale. We can't see the top of this. We don't really know what happens. It might go all the way through. It might just go in uh, at the bottom. Um, seen them both ways. So I'll just do it something like this. If you find the grid getting in your way like it is for me right now, I'm just going to turn that off. This is the button right here. So I'll just get that out of the way. And I'm just going to squeeze that down so it has a little bit more of an oval shape to it, something like that. All right, so that looks uh, that looks probably good enough for me. I feel fine about that. And then uh, I'm just going to create that little bump on the handle, this little bit right here, by duplicating this. So I'll just press Control D, and then R for scale, and then just scale that down so it's a you know about the right size. And then I'm going to scale it up uniform by the middle there, and then just move that down into position. And press F to make sure this is fitting OK. So that looks fine to me. And then I'm just going to bevel out these edges. So again, take a look at your reference to see what it looks like. This one is a, just sort of a sharp bevel. So I'm going to run that bevel, and then I'm going to run a separate bevel for the bottom. So basically, you can, you can run multiple edges like we did on the head of the hammer uh, at the same time. But if you need a different radius or a different number of segments, then you need to run that as a separate operation. So I want to bevel that down. That basically looks fine to me. And then I'll just double click here. I'm going to run a bevel on that as well. Only this time I'm going to add a few more segments to, to round that thing out. So maybe four or so looks pretty good. All right, so something like that's looking fine. And then I'll just assign some materials. I might as well go ahead and run some kind of a bevel on the on this top as well. So I'll run a bevel there. Uh, maybe reduce that um, fraction just a little bit. Reduce meaning smaller. My bad. All right, there we go. So that's something. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and assign a couple different materials to this that aren't in this scene. So just so you can see how that process works, I'm going to select the, the handle of the hammer and right click. And I'm going to choose assign a favorite material. I'm going to choose a blend. Um, and basically all I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to this blend. I'm going to change the color to whatever you want it to be. It doesn't have to match the, the image source. So if I want this to be more of a fiberglass looking handle, then maybe it's maybe it's that really bright yellow, something like that. So that basically looks fine. And then I'll do the same thing um, for this. And typically, it is a good idea to name your materials. So um, or you can call it yellow, or you can call it handle, whatever you want. Um, and I always add this underscore mat to separate this so I know what, um, what type of uh, something is, basically. All right, so uh, do the same thing here. Uh, looks like that's going off screen. So again, I'll just try to push this up. Uh, I'm going to assign a favorite material, a blend. Uh, blend is a great choice because you can make blend look like a Lambert. Basically, all you have to do is drop this out, and now blend looks like a Lambert. It's a little bit more expensive, but that's inconsequential. Um, um, and uh, it, it's basically some, a material that is fairly flexible uh, that's built into Maya. So I would say stick with blend in the beginning. I'll just drop this down to something pretty dark. I'm going to leave some specularity, but I don't want it to be really bright. So I could dull that out, broaden it out, try to make it feel a little bit more rubber-like. So this, is, this makes it a little wider. This makes it fall off faster. Uh, and this brings the overall effect down. So there I can make that feel a little bit more rubbery and this feel a little shinier. All right, so that's pretty much it for that one. Again, good idea uh, to go ahead and name these. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that. Don't waste your time watching me do this. Um, and then cap. And then in this case, um, these things could either be grouped together or parented so that when you move one, they all move. So for instance, if I always wanted to move this based on the handle, then I could select the cap and the head and the handle last, and then choose Edit Parent. And again, that's an order of operations thing. The order that you select them is the one that matters. The last selected element should be the parent. 
Now when I select the handle and I move it or rotate it, everything moves along. And you can see that over here in the outliner. And if you don't see your outliner here, you can choose Windows Outliner to, to bring that up. There's a little plus next to it. So here now I can see the cap, the head, and the handle. So they're still all three separate objects. They haven't been combined, but now they're all selected whenever I select the handle. I can still select the head and move it independently and the cap. Okay, so that's good, um, good uh, practice to get into a little bit of organization as well.